And next up, we have Dwayne Brown, who is going to be talking Snapchat and TikTok. And are you here with us? Dwayne, there you are. Hi, Dwayne. It's coming off mute. There he is. Totally Great. on mute. Sorry. That's all good. How are things in Canada? We have snow, you know. Uh, so yeah, things are okay, I guess. I think like you all down there are like, can our government get their stuff together and like roll out this vaccine at a faster <laughs> pace? You know, that's yep. how we all feel. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, yeah, otherwise it's okay, you know. All right. Well, um, I can't wait to hear what you've got to tell us about Snapchat and TikTok and uh, take it away. I think you should be able to share your screen now. Cool, let me just open up, share my screen. Cool, awesome. So I'm going to talk about uh, TikTok and Snap. I'm going to go heavier on the Snap because I think, from a performance perspective, if you're trying to like spend a dollar today and get a dollar tomorrow and next week or even next month, I think it's a better platform than TikTok. Uh, I think TikTok is like a drug, so we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Uh, probably not reference drug again, but something that gives you a dopamine hit. Uh, and then hopefully you all have tons of questions. Uh, and I probably won't take the whole time, so we have lots of time to ask questions, because I think the best times I've had when I talked about Snap and TikTok is when people get to ask questions, we get to like have a discussion versus me just like talking at you for the next 25 minutes, and you're going, well, he just stopped talking with that Canadian accent. Uh, so let's get things going. So I'm going to talk about Snap and TikTok from a user perspective. Then I'm going to talk about like, are your customers there? You know, I think of all the different clients that we have, the big question they are like, Dwayne isn't like Snap or TikTok for those like teenagers or those people who are in university or college. I'm like 40, 50, 60. Why would I want to advertise on this platform? I just want to like sell my candles or my mountain bikes or whatever it is that we're selling. Uh, so I think understanding if your customers there are really important. Uh, and then I'm also going to talk about like where we get started, right? You got to start somewhere in any ad platform. And, you know, I think when we've taken over accounts from internal teams or other freelancers or contractors or agencies, everybody starts on a platform in a different way. So I'm going to share how we start on the platform, and that might inspire you to take a different path with Snapchat if you're running ads right now, or if you're not, it might just inspire you to take a different path than how you'd normally start if you did any paid social platform. So Snap, it's uh, been a crazy year with the pandemic and like most apps, they've grown immensely through this pandemic because we've all stuck at home. We all want something to do. Maybe we live alone like me or you've got like roommates, you live with your family and as much as you love those people, you just want some time alone. And so that meant people have spent more time on things like Clubhouse and Snap and TikTok and other apps. And so 238 is where Snap was a year ago. They're at about 260 million right now, but I couldn't find a nice updated version of this slide. So I kept it anyways, because I think what's important on this slide is that people spend an average of 30 minutes a day on the app. And when you think about that, 30 minutes in a day is a lot because you've got like eight hours at work, you sleep for five, six, seven, eight hours, and then you got a lot of free time there. So to take all that free time you have when you're not like running errands and trying to just like live your life to spend 30 minutes on Snap is a lot. But even in that 30 minutes, people spend an average of 20 minutes playing games, whether it's solo with friends. So if, if you go after like gamers or people who are into like entertainment or interactive experiences and Snapchat might be a real great platform for you. And then Snap says people are 20% more likely to buy something to see an ad. I think every ad platform says that. Uh, sure, I am likely to buy something to see an ad, but am I more likely to buy it? Sure, probably. Uh, and then for millennials, which I am, barely, uh, and for Gen Z, it says we have a trillion dollar buying power, which I think is pretty good. If we could just like, at least in Canada, direct the buying power to also voting out the crappy government so we don't get like screwed over, uh, that'd be great as well. But that's another talk for another day. And so when we think about Snapchat, we think about how there's 108, probably close to 150 million people in North America right now. But it isn't just a North American app. There are tons of people who use the app around the world. So whether in South and Latin America at 32 million or Europe is at 77 million or even down in Australia where they're super isolated, it's probably more closer to 10 million now, even they're using the app. And I think that's really interesting because Snap hasn't been around for 
a billion years. And so the fact that they've got almost that global reach already when they're still under 300 million is really good because it means that people are connected to the app, not just because they're all necessarily alike as people, but they're connected because of their shared interests as people, right? So it's not all just like men or all just women or all just boys or all just girls. There are people who are connected through shared interests and that builds a community. And then the other thing I think is really interesting is that people spend an average of, and send an average of 4 billion snaps on any given day. And 38% of people don't use Instagram on any given day. So if you find that like me, that your performance on Facebook and Instagram is maybe not as hot as it used to be a year ago. And you're like, where do we spend more money? I think Snap is a great place to take some of that creative that you've been running on Facebook, take some of that money you've been spending on Facebook and just test out another platform. Uh, because the way that both Facebook and Google are headed uh, means that we need to find places to spend our money that isn't Google, Facebook, or Instagram. And as much as I love those platforms because they mean I have a job, I also know oh. that like I should not give all my focus and attention there because it'll take my off the ball of other opportunities that might be less competitive for me. And a less competitive place for a lot of our clients in e-com, D2C, SaaS is being on Snap or TikTok. And so when we look at the user growth for TikTok over the last couple of years, where they basically went from like no one knowing who they are to people saying they have roughly about a billion people right now. And there's about 800 million at the end of the summer last year. That's a lot of people. Obviously that number is global. That's not just like America or North America or the Americas, that's global. Some people say, a quarter of that is in North America. Some people say it's less. Nobody really knows because TikTok won't put out those numbers necessarily. But there's definitely a lot of people there if you want to run ads from a global perspective, which again, I think is the benefit of both TikTok and Snap is that there's that global reach there if you want to do things outside of North America, where North America could sometimes be the most competitive market for a lot of brands. And so if they're going to be at a billion right now, you know, where are they going to be a year from now, six months from now? Uh, at this growth rate, they would probably be somewhere closer to, you know, one and a half billion. Uh, so getting on the ground floor now where you can test out things to figure out like what creative is going to work, what creative is not going to work, figuring out what your targeting is going to be, what your targeting is not going to be. Both TikTok and Snap have very different, different targeting options. Uh, and as much as we like to take our best performing audiences from like Facebook and Instagram and port them over to Snap, that doesn't always easily apply to TikTok because the way you can talk it on TikTok is slightly different. It's just not as robust or as mature, which we'll talk about in a second. Hmm. Okay, I've never seen this before. Let's see if I escape. Okay, cool, cool. All right, internet issues on a Thursday. <laughs> uh, so maybe it's the image on this slide because I just took it off of TikTok's site. But basically what I want to represent is like, just like Snap, there is like global reach, billion people, even people in like APAC, where sometimes, especially when you think of like China, which is really big with like WeChat, sometimes the apps they use in other parts of the world aren't the same, the apps that we use here in North America. So I think the fact that both of these apps have uh, partially global reach is really indicative of that they could be the next Instagram. And so you want to get on the ground floor or even the first floor uh, today. Let me skip slides and see if I can open this back up and hopefully that will work and we won't have any presentation issues. Awesome, awesome. So maybe it was just, uh, maybe it was just that slide. And then similar to Snap, how we talked about only or have we talked about 38% of people don't use Instagram on any given day. I thought showing the inner overlap between let's say other platforms and TikTok was really interesting. This is from 2019 and I couldn't find anything more updated. Uh, and I think the challenge is that uh, TikTok is very close to their chest with their numbers and they don't release everything because people are questioning whether like it's as good of a platform as they make it seem. You know, obviously we've seen over the last couple of years that Facebook gets like roasted when they said they lied about their video metrics and then they lied about this and then they lied about that. Uh, it's easy to say that you didn't lie when you didn't say anything. Uh, and so TikTok doesn't always release stuff, which is a little unfortunate. Um, but I think when you look at the percentage of unduplicated users, 
between TikTok and the other platforms that they can present an opportunity for people to take some of their money off other app platforms that they normally spend money on and see what's going down on the world of TikTok and Snap. So are your customers there? That's like the biggest question we get from clients, even like my bout and by client who is like the dudest of dudes. He's like a dude's dude. Uh, he's like, Dwayne, I don't really use Snapchat. No one on the team uses it. Like, why would you spend money there? And I'm like, well, you know, there are people like me who use it, who's, you know, above the age of 30 and close to 40 in a couple of years or like in like 12 months. And so I'm like, why don't we just like run a test? You know, we, we test out things for two months or three months. We test out, you know, three or four or $5,000 compared to like a whole budget uh, and just see what happens. If it doesn't work, we'll never do it again. If it does work, well, then why don't we just put more money there? Because it, it helps us ideally grow the business. We don't want to just have all our money in one basket because if that basket gets a hole or you're like Facebook and performance starts to tank, you're now going to scramble and find other baskets to put your money in. Totally not my day to day, everyone. I'm sorry. I've just never seen this before. Let's do. Nope, never seen this before. The weirdest day. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna probably just do it like this. And that way we don't have that reload issue, which is not the ideal experience, but we're gonna go with it and make it work. Uh, so what I think about, when I think about a test on a platform, I will usually try to install like the pixel, whether it's the snap pixel on the left or the TikTok pixel on the right, uh, and just see if like the pixel will collect any data. And like, if there are any people that actually like go from our website to that platform, uh, that's probably the, I'm going to say the easier of the two options. If a client won't give you access to like emails for some reason, or if it's like a new, new brand and they don't have like tons of emails to upload into a platform. And the reason I like to go with uh, Pixels because outside of it's easy to install is then you can start to like understand who your different audiences are. So outside of that, I also like to try to like upload email addresses. Most of our clients have been around for at least a couple of years, sometimes more than a decade. So they have, you know, thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of emails over that time and uploading emails into Snap is really interesting because what you can start to do is, and we'll talk about this on the next slide, is you can start to pick that email list and then start to understand of the people who are on those email lists, which of those people if any are on Snap and what do they look like on the platform? And when you look at what they look like on the platform, you can start to look at like, what's their gender or you can look at like, what is their gender within the United States versus the audience you just saved. You can look at like their age uh, across everything from 13 to 17 all the way to 35. Obviously if you're selling like alcohol or something that's like 18 or 21 plus, you can't like target people under, you know, 18 or under 21 plus. Uh, but having the opportunity to like upload a list of emails and understand how the list you uploaded may be similar to the rest of America or maybe similar to the people who generally buy your product by looking at data and good analytics can help you understand if your best customers are on Snap or on TikTok or any platform in general. And so when we upload a client's email list into Snap, we'll honestly just go into audience insights and create a new audience and then pick the audience that we uploaded. So in this case, we'd pick like customer list newsletter. And then like I shown on this past screen, this will pop up and they'll have tons of options for you to pick different insights to understand like who is on that list versus America. And then also understand if you go into Google Analytics, you know, what does our best customers look like and how do those customers compare to the people who would come to our site and use Snap at the same time. And so I think like the gender one is really interesting, but I also think things like household income is really interesting. If you're trying to target, let's say people who only make 50,000 a year or 100,000 a year or like a quarter of a million dollars a year, being able, being, being able to understand what household income people are on Snap is really valuable. I've sold everything from like flowers to birdie shoes to like mountain bike parts, which if anyone here does a mountain bike, I'd say it's a really expensive hobby because you'll easily drop a thousand dollars, but you may not even have a full bike at a thousand dollars. Like a fork, which is a part of your bike is like 800 bucks on a good day. 
And so you generally, for that client, we want to target people that have got lots of money. So knowing that I can go and say, I only want to target people who have X amount of money on Snap, or I want to find out if our customers who make X amount of money are on Snap is really valuable using audience insights, or even things like languages, you know, what do people speak? You know, maybe trying to target a certain group of people with a certain ad, whether it's like, you know, Spanish or French in Canada, understanding what kind of people are on your list makes it easier to understand if you can run a certain campaign that might be geared towards uh, people who speak a certain language. And then other cool things you can do is obviously get a breakdown of the people on that list and where they are in this case, like in America, but you could also obviously pick like Canada or another country like the UK or Australia. The other option you can look at is just interest. So the people on the list, what are they into based on what staff knows about those people based on their hashed email address? So like, are they into sports, music, film, TV? And then like, what device do they use? So whether it's like one of the big carriers, we have different carriers in Canada. So we have like, you know, Telus or Rogers or Bell. Obviously in America, you've got like Verizon and AT&T and T-Mobile. Uh, and then obviously things like the UK and Europe and Australia all have different carrier carriers, but you could also see that data with audience insights, which I think is kind of cool. And they can even look at people on that list based on like what they look at, what they click on, Snap trying to understand and with their connected to data logics, you know, are people like married, not married, you know, parents, moms, call graduates, do they like own a small business? All things that are really cool because maybe you want to target like small business decision makers because that's where your product goes after. Maybe you want to target people who are married or parents or moms. Uh, so all cool things to understand about your audience and if they are on Snap. And then the last thing, kind of like data logic is experience. So that's just another connector for Snap that lets them understand and pull in people's interests and find out the people on your list, what are they like based on Experian data, which again includes like married, not married, but also things like education, life events, like i.e. a first time buyer, like first time buyers is a huge life event because maybe you wanna target people if you have like investments or maybe you wanna target people to buy like your product cause it's for like graduates or you wanna sell something to like just first time buyers in general. And what's cool is with all these audience insights, it's kind of like what we used to have back in the day with Facebook, which is like Facebook insights. So now we have like Snap in insights and these insights can help us understand what we're gonna do in other platforms. Because if you upload your email list and you understand who's on that list and what they're like as people or what they're potentially like, then you can figure out what you're gonna target on Facebook or Instagram or what you might do on YouTube. We always forget that YouTube is the world's second largest English speak and search engine. And there's lots of opportunity for product discovery and just targeting people on YouTube versus obviously just like the whole Google ecosystem. And so you don't have those TikTok insights as robust on the platform like you do on Snap. And that's partly because the platform for TikTok is just not as mature. And I think what really makes TikTok separate from Snap is that like when you launch a campaign on TikTok, this can't be proof, but people have theorized that they like basically push your campaign to give you better metrics. It's kind of like when you get like a high from like bungee jumping or doing something really like scary or exciting, you get this dopamine hit. It's kind of what TikTok does when you launch a campaign. And then your goal is to always chase and find that high again, but it's really hard to find that high if you don't have like tons of creative or maybe you're not a brand that goes after lots of like influencers, which is where we see the division between Snap and TikTok. We think if we're going on TikTok, it's because we want to go after more influencers and that's kind of our market. If we want more direct performance, we want to go after Snap. And then when you look at targeting and insights, uh, you look at all the targeting you can do with Snap on the left. So any insight that you see on Snap, you can turn into a targeting. But when you look at the targeting for TikTok on the right, it's just not as robust as probably where TikTok was three or four years ago. And so there's not a lot of options that get super granular. So that's one thing you have to keep in mind. If you're used to taking like your interest target off Facebook and Instagram, and then you're used to porting that over to Snap, you can't just take all of that information and port it over to TikTok as easily. You've got to go a bit more broad so you reach more people, which may not be a bad thing because maybe your play on TikTok is pure brand awareness, which is not most of what our clients want to do. But if it was what you wanted to do, TikTok might be a really great option for that. And then here's some like breakdown of what the interest targeting looks like. So you can look at like news and entertainment and then that breaks down to some categories which breaks down to some more categories. 
uh, which is great. But if you have other things like education or pets, the ability to break it down granular isn't always there. So that's just something to keep in mind. So now when I think about running ads, I always think about like, should I even run an ad on a platform? You know, assuming that I do find that my audience is there, I think there are like three brands that, excuse me, I think there are three brands that make a lot of sense. And so like, I'm a big fan of The Rock. I love The Rock. I don't think The Rock can do no wrong. I'm sure one day he's gonna do something wrong and make the news probably, but until then, I love The Rock. And so I'm gonna use The Rock as an example of what three brands I think should be on the platform. So this is The Rock, obviously Dwayne Johnson with his daughter. And so I call this like old school traditional rock. And so like, if you're like an old school brand where you do a lot of things on like Facebook, Instagram, Google, you've maxed it out. You're kind of looking for another platform to go on. I think like Snap and TikTok are two places you should really consider. They're only gonna to continue to grow over the next couple of years. And it's better to get on the ground floor now and test them out than wait for another year, another two years and test them out when they'll be more competitive and quite frankly, more expensive because both Facebook and Google are not gonna get any cheaper. Those CPMs are gonna go every year and we know that. So I think of this as like a celebrity rock. If you're not seeing the TV show Ballers, great TV show on HBO. It ended like last year, but I highly recommend it. Uh, so if you're like a celebrity brand where you've got lots of content, whether it's videos, images, if you like The Rock or like Will Smith, then I think being on either TikTok or Snap really makes a lot of sense because you can take a lot of that content and repurpose it into ads, whether it's like UCG content, or you could take something that you've run on other platforms and have it re-edited for Snap. And that's always a great option because then you're not having to like recreate ads from scratch. You know, we work with a client that sells a high-tech water bottle called Lark, and we're always asking them like, just give us whatever's working on Facebook and Instagram, reformat it, re-edit it so we can run it on Snap and let us figure out like if it's gonna work or not because the ability to like make lots of content at scale is really hard. And whenever you can like share ads or content between platforms, it just makes your life a lot easier. So if you're like a celebrity brand where like if you hired us or a freelancer or you hired someone in house and you could like give them a Google Drive folder of all your content that you've made over the last year, then I would say it's worth testing out both TikTok and Snap and seeing what happens. The last kind of rock is I wanna talk is like badass rock. So this is like from Hobbs and Shaw, great movie by the way. And so I think of badass rock as brands who zig when others zag. So back in Q4, lots of brands were like freaking out because things were more expensive with Google and Facebook. And I was over here kind of laughing because we were like doubling down on things like Snap, Discovery Ads, other platforms, just figuring out how do we maximize a client's revenue versus just trying to make a platform like Facebook work when Facebook has been the biggest challenge and the biggest headache for any marketer in the last six months. And so if you're having a headache on the platform that is Facebook, you really need to just accept that it's only going to get worse, probably not going to get better. And they should start to figure out where else can I spend my money uh, and not put all my eggs in one basket. So if you want to zig another zag, you should consider TikTok and you should consider Snap. And so then when it gets started. So there are like three places I think we should all get started when we go on a platform. The obvious one is like remarketing. I often think if you can't get remarketing to work on an ad platform, it's probably not going to work for you at all because remarketing is like, the bottom of the barrel, it's the easiest thing to get work in. So whether it's add to cart initiated checkout audiences, people who viewed your collection or category or feature page, people who viewed your product description page or some sort of landing page that's in your funnel, targeting all those are great places to start for re remarketing. You could also do some retargeting and try to upsell, cross-sell people who've already purchased from you in the past. That's obviously an option as well. And if you can get one of those, whether it's retargeting or remarketing to work, then the next place obviously to go is just to like double down on that retention. So whether it's like all customers, people are two X your average order value, people who bought from you twice in the last 365 days or the last two years, getting your remarketing to work or getting your retention to work uh, is probably the best place to start with Snap. And then if you can get those two things to work, the last place I go is obviously just like prospecting or cold audiences whether you do lookalikes on TikTok or Snap, they don't call them lookalikes on either platform. We're gonna go with that because everyone knows what a lookalike audience is for the most part. Uh, the other option is if you look at the audience insights, you can take like a lookalike audience, layer on an interest audience, and then like hyper-focus the talking of that audience. Cause you know, if most of your customers are into like, let's say going to the spa or most of your customers have like pets, to take a look like audience you built off of your purchase, there's a layer on interest targeting like pets or spas or something like that. Well, hyper-focus your targeting to make sure you go after 
most likely the best people within that look like audience to target. And if you can get your remarketing to work, your retargeting to work, and your retention to work along with your prospecting, you're probably gonna find another platform that you can market on, which is great. Obviously, you're not gonna have the same scale that you would on Facebook and Google, but it's not always about having the same scale. It's about finding other platforms you can spend money and make a profitable business from, and quite frankly, just have less stress. And that is the end of my presentation. Great, thank you, Dwayne. And uh, yes, so if you've got questions for Dwayne, you can throw those in the Q&A and, um, and you'll be joining us for the panel discussion later, um, correct, Dwayne? Yeah, yeah, it's in like Great. 20 minutes, isn't it? Something like that, something like Yeah, 1245-ish yeah. uh, 